This is your front load for activities 4.1 through 4.2, Structure of the Heart and Blood Flow. The circulation in the body is done through the heart. It helps with blood flow, and the cardiovascular system is what's responsible for carrying the oxygens and nutrients. It's very important to understand how the heart works in conjunction with the lungs in order to carry, innate, carry deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood throughout the body so that it can supply oxygen to the cells throughout your body. Systemic is what we call the circulation whenever blood is being carried throughout the body, whereas pulmonary is what we call the circulation whenever deoxygenated blood is trying to get to the lungs to unload carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. So think pulmonary going to the lungs, think systemic going to the whole system. Systemic is for the blood that already has oxygen. Arteries go away, generally, from the heart to supply all the different cells or to go to the lungs. These are under high amounts of pressure. Um, you might have heard of somebody saying an artery might burst. They're under high amount of pressure. Microcirculation is wherever the exchange occurs between arteries and veins. Notice where the blood mixes in this picture, red and blue, it kind of turns a light purple. Um, arteries are the largest, then arterioles, then uh, veins and venules, and capillaries are the smallest. Those are the tiny portions that are purple in the middle. Capillaries exchange uh, blood with the tissues. Venules receive capillary blood, and arterioles feed the capillaries. Again, arteries go away, and veins bring blood back to the heart generally. Veins are under low pressure. Take a look at the picture in the right-hand corner. The lumen or the thickness of the artery is much thicker than the lumen or the thickness of veins because arteries are under more pressure so they have thicker walls, whereas veins are much more thinner. You will get to see a segment of this under the microscope later in the unit. Chambers of the heart. Note the picture in the right hand corner. It's just considered, we call this a heart box. It's just a box showing the right and left. Remember, right is the opposite when you're looking at it a regular diagram or when you're dissecting a heart because when you say right you're talking about the patient's right side which when you look at it is on the left. Um, the right side of the heart is generally shown in like a blue just to represent deoxygenated blood, blood that doesn't have oxygen. It needs to go to the lungs to pick up more. Once it goes to the lungs the blood in this case in this diagram is red. Think of that like when you go get your blood taken and it looks red or when it comes out of your vein it bleeds red. That's Think of that as hitting the oxygen turning more of a, a red color than a deep purple-ish blue. The upper chambers of the heart are called the atria and the lower are called the ventricles. You can think of alphabetical order A is at the top, V is at the bottom, uh, atria and ventricle. The left side is oxygenated, the right side is deoxygenated, showed here, shown here with blue and red as colors. Here is the picture of our heart anatomy that we did in class. Uh, this heart is numbered and labeled. The numbers are going to show you the path of blood. Starting at the top and the bottom with the vena cava, vena cavas, the superior and inferior, the vena cavas bring deoxygenated blood, that's blood that needs um, to pick up more oxygen, from the body um, to the top chamber called the right atrium, number two. The right atrium must use the tricuspid valve, number three, to, enter, to allow the blood to enter into the number four right ventricle. After blood is in the right ventricle, it'll be squeezed through the pulmonary valve, number five, so that it can get to the pulmonary arteries where it will travel away from the heart to go to the lungs. Once blood has traveled to the lungs, it will become full of oxygen and it will re-enter the sides of the heart using the pulmonary veins. Remember, arteries away, number six, pulmonary veins come to the heart, number seven. Number seven, the pulmonary veins are on both sides of the heart, they wrap around the back of the posterior, posterior view. They travel around the back where they dump oxygenated blood into the left atrium, number eight. The left atrium is attached to the number nine mitral valve, also called the bicuspid valve. This allows the blood to enter into the left ventricle, number 10. The heart now needs to feed this oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. This is where number 11, the aortic valve, comes into play. This allows blood to enter into the aorta, number 12, which will distribute the blood to the rest of the body. This brings us to the exterior anatomy of the heart. The coronary plane. 
The cardiac muscle receive oxygen from the from for metabolism and release our waste products into our vessels. The front of the the heart we can call the coronary plane. This is where the coronary arter, arteries and vessels can be seen from the front or ventral side. Here's a picture of the coronary plane. The base is the top of the heart. It's the widest section. The coronary arteries are pictured there. They look like little veins or little lines coming down through. Um, and then the very tip of the heart where it's pointed somewhat uh, is called the apex. When we dissect our hearts, we will have the apex aligned like it is now. You should be able to see the coronary arteries. That's, that's the top of the heart, also called the ventral side or anterior view. Again, there's some coronary arteries and veins labeled. Auricles are these little flaps. We like to call them the ears or ear-shaped extensions. They're the atrium, and you don't really see the atrium until you cut open the heart and you look inside the atrium, or the atria, plural, are the pockets where the blood first comes into. Uh, the little flaps we call auricles. Auricles, atrium, I'm okay if you use those as synonyms. The auricles wrap around the anterior side of the heart, so you can actually lift them up. They're like little flaps, and inside they will inflate when blood goes into them. The great vessels are the vessels that are able to be seen um, on the exterior and interior of the heart, and they're the large vessels that, and veins. The first one is the aorta. The aorta uh, arises from the left of the ventricle of the heart, and it's the largest artery of the body. This is where most people start their um, identification because the aorta is very easily um, seen. The aorta has a branch or an arch, and it looks like three tubes coming out of it. The aorta the brachiocephalic trunk, and the common carotid artery. We call this whole thing the aorta most of the time, um, so don't let that um, throw you off. Make sure you're able to point out the major branch or the aorta in your dissection. The middle vessel coming off the arch is the left common. It supplies um, the neck and the head with blood. The opening on the left part of the arch is the left subclavian artery, and it supplies blood to the upper limbs. The back of the heart, also called the dorsal side, or the posterior view, you can also see the aorta, the large vessel at the top. You can see the other two pointing to the right on this picture. Make sure you understand that the aorta is the largest artery in the body, and it transports oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Here is a posterior or back view of the vena cava. The vena cavas, there's a top and a bottom one. Superior is above, inferior below. The superior and inferior vena cava are often referred to just as the vena cava. This is where low oxygenated blood returns from the heart from the vena cava to go into the top right atrium. The pulmonary artery, pictured here, is after the blood leaves the right atrium, it will flow to the right ventricle, which upon contractions transports the blood through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. It comes off the right ventricle as the pulmonary trunk, we sometimes call it, and it will lead to the left and the right lungs. The pulmonary veins are on the posterior of the heart. The openings are inferior to the pulmonary arteries. You should be able to stick a probe through and make the left auricle wiggle when you stick your finger or a probe through these. Remember, once in the lungs, the carbon dioxide leaves the blood and oxygen enters. The blood then returns through this pulmonary veins and empties into the left atrium of the heart. Here are the pulmonary veins, another view. Notice, in this picture, you can see the silver probe sticking through the pulmonary veins. You should be able to run your fingers and touch throughout. This brings us to the interior anatomy of the heart. When we dissect, we're going to dissect on the corneal plane. We're going to make one big cut from oracle to oracle down, go from the left oracle down to the apex, flip it over, go from the right oracle down to the apex. When you do this, you might have to take your scalpel and kind of start to slice a couple of the fibers open, and this will allow you to lift it open like this. When you open your heart up on your dissection tray on your mat, you should see the top and the bottom halves. Remember, the right is actually the left, and the left is actually the right. 
this brings us to our top atriums. Our atriums are the small pockets. Uh, they look like little um, flaps on the outside, and on the inside you can see that they're the top pockets. Atriums are smaller than ventricles, and they're at the top. Notice there is the septum in the middle. There's the right atrium. There's the left atrium. Notice the septum is in the middle. The septum separates the two atrium. Below the atrium are the right and left ventricles. Note the width of the right and left ventricles. The left ventricle is much more thicker because it's got to pump blood all throughout the rest of the body that has oxygen in it. Whereas the left ventricle is much thinner because it only has to pump deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So it's not very far. They're right behind the heart. And so it doesn't, it's not under as much pressure when it comes to being, have to, to be thick. Located between the atria and the ventricles on both sides will be valves. There's the right ventricle, there's the left ventricle. Valves are very important because they prevent backflow of blood through the part. It's like a doorway. This picture shows all the valves that you're going to need to know. The mitral, the aortic, pulmonary, and tricuspid. Uh, notice the mit mitral valve has another name. We call it the bicuspid because there's only looks like two flaps versus three or tricuspid. Note the size difference between the mitral valves and tricuspid valves, how they're larger than the aortic and pulmonary valves. The tricuspid valve shown here on the left is one of two of the right heart valves. It separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. This valve has three cusps, which prevent backflow of blood after it leaves the right atrium. Here's a close-up of the tricuspid valve. Remember, it allows deoxygenated blood to flow from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Next, here's a close-up of the mitral or bicuspid valve. This allows oxygenated blood to flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Now, I did not talk about the semilunar valves yet. The semilunar valves are at the top of the heart. They are between the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary valve allows blood to flow from the right ventricle at the bottom up through the top to the pulmonary arteries or away from the heart. The aortic semilunar valve allows blood to flow from the left ventricle, the bottom of the heart, up to the aorta where it will carry oxygen to the rest of the cells in the body. Here's a close-up of the chordae tendinae. Chordae tendinae, also called heart strings, are the fibers that connect the valves to the papillary muscle. Papillary muscles look nice and smooth and shiny. Um, you actually will be able to feel these in the lab and feel how hard and muscular they are. If you have successfully gone over what you needed to go over during the lab, you will be able to show me the apex, the base, the right and left sides of the heart, the auricles, and the coronary artery and vesicles. This is on the outside or the exterior of the heart. When you get to the interior of the heart, you should be able to point out the septum, which separates the left and right sides of the heart. You should be able to show me the atrium, or atria for plural, and ventricles, all the valves, including the tricuspid, pulmonary valve, mitral, aka bicuspid, and the aortic valves, the chordae tendinae, and the papillary muscles. Final checkpoint, you should be able to show me the flow of blood through the heart when it comes to the different steps as shown before. Feel free to pause and go back and watch this video as needed, and we will do our dissection shortly.